Welcome to Soul Science, the shift, the time, the movement. May you live the soul truth. Live from Los Angeles, this is Dr. Aaron, Doctor of Divinity. We come together each day to know the truth, live on spiritual principle, and align with universal law. We also come together in a community society to know the truth, also to uh, live from empowerment, enlightenment, and entrepreneurship. We truly believe that when somebody awakens, they have a gift and message to bring to the world. And we are awakening a billion people by developing spiritual leaders. And spiritual leaders are not just the typical spiritual leaders that are writing or speaking or doing you know, events. The spiritual leader, in my opinion, the future spiritual leader is you. It's the person who impacts every single person they come in contact with. It can be, yes, it can be a small business owner. It can be a mom. It can be anybody. The people who touch our lives. And I think that's where spirituality is going. It has to live in our heart and it has to touch and impact and inspire people everywhere we go. So we are doing a series. It's called Live Your Truth. It's a 12-week series, and we are on week 10 of 12. This is um, all based off of uh, a framework and technology I've built over 22 years, which is called the Truth Triangle, which is based in processes from Greek oracle processes, science of mind, metaphysics. It's really understanding how the subconscious mind is connected with the universal law and how we birth our truth. So it's based on Mayudics, and Mayudics is a word, it's a a Greek word that is considered to birth your truth. Just like midwifery is birthing your baby, Mayudics is birthing your truth. So we birth the truth. And on the truth triangle, there's three sides, and we are birthing your true power. The true power that you are, that divine, all-knowing, all-spiritual, infinite resources, powerful spiritual being. On the second side of the triangle, we birth your your passion, your specific truth. There's ultimate truths like energy will never be destroyed, and there's relative truths. And we're really birthing your truth. What's true for you? What's true for you in the realm of your relationships, in how you like to spend your days, how you sleep, what sleep patterns work for you, what food works for you, all these areas, what is good for you in the realm of money and career and your expression. That's what we're birthing here, okay? And the third side is birthing your purpose. And your purpose is from all the suffering of all lifetimes to come to your why. Why is it so important to you? Because I truly believe that you're here to complete your DNA. You've got memory of all lifetimes that come down your DNA. And there's good memory and there's bad memory. And you get to complete those cycles for all your lineage. And then you get to create your legacy that you're leaving in this lifetime. Okay? So today we are dealing with... Um, past life regressions. And this is the third side of the triangle, which is really birthing your purpose. And what I found after years and years of working with, you know, all different types of clients, CEOs, celebrities, single moms, future spiritual leaders, all kinds of people, the past life progressions are profound. And what's interesting is I always think, oh, you know what, it might not work, you know. And sure enough, some huge epiphany that I never saw coming comes sliding on and smacks us all in the face to go, holy cow, this stuff is powerful. So I am going to I'm going to attempt to walk you through a past life regression. I don't know how well this is going to be able to be done within your, you know, your own home and whatever. I don't think there's anything to fear here. This is more of an imagination process. As Einstein said, our imagination, our fantasy is the greatest faculty we have. And that's really what we're tapping in through past life regression. Okay. So let's do this thing. So past life regression. So past life regression is the process of pulling mental pictures from the Akashic records. You could also say from just that's living in your DNA, right? So past life regression is the process of pulling up mental pictures from the Akashic records that you have energetic emotions attached to neutralizing them. Okay, the truth is that all past lives are your lineage. All past lives are your lineage. The truth is that when you go into past life regressions, if you really started going deeper and deeper and deeper, you would break through the wall and realize all past lives are your past lives, okay? Many, many lives, many masters, right? You are one with everything and everyone. However, you have a particular DNA and a karmic lineage that your soul associates with. So we're first going to deal with your particular soul and your particular lineage. If somebody's out there and they're like, you know what, I want to go all the way down the rabbit hole. I want to know everything. I want the entire veil to come off. Then keep doing past life regressions, okay? 
in my opinion, there are two primary reasons to do past life regressions. Okay, obviously, the ultimate goal is to have enlightenment. But the true primary reasons to do past life regression is to one, when doing your trauma work, past life regressions can assist in neutralizing the emotions associated with mental pictures from past lives that are projecting into this lifetime. Because we at, you know, my practice and our practice in society is to not be way out there as spiritualists. The reality is everything is created from spirit and we want to be able to have it applicable. How does this affect your immediate circumstances in your life? How does this affect the way that you are able to create money, your relationships, having deeper connections, your health, right? We don't want to get too woo-woo. We want to bring down to tactics and how you actually apply this stuff and how it makes a difference in your world today. So number one reason to do your past life regression is to heal the trauma in your DNA. Epigenetics proves now that memory of all lifetimes is is living in your DNA. So the fears that you feel, those, you know, reactions that you feel, the sadness that you don't know where it comes from, that is all living in your from your DNA. So we want to complete and neutralize those mental pictures associated with that so that you can get freed up for more free will and enjoy your life more. The second primary reason to do past life regressions beyond really woo woo stuff is getting when getting clarity on your purpose and calling it helps to spot the patterns of suffering from past life mental pictures triumph over your trials so that you can have a gateway to burden your purpose and calling. Okay, so there's two primary reasons to do past life regressions. One is to get freed up from the trauma that's living on your track. And number two is to birth your purpose and calling. So more than anything, purpose and calling is really something that everyone wants to figure out. People are like, I want to know what it is. And oftentimes I find that people need to stop trying to figure out what their purpose and calling is. And when they do their inner healing, it will be revealed. It's revealed. It's spoken through within. Okay, so past life regression is accessed via imagination and fantasy. Okay, so I don't want you to get too too caught up in, is this real? Is this not real? Do I believe in past lives or not? Get over it, okay? The reality is this, is that it doesn't matter if you believe in past lives or not. The reality is that you have memory stored in your DNA and in the collective consciousness. The mental pictures may be fantasy or reality, but it doesn't matter. What matters is the emotions that are attached to the mental pictures that are impinging upon your subconscious, right? So if you're able to pull up a fantasy picture, but you have a lot of emotion around it, then it's the emotion that matters. It doesn't matter if the if, it's like having a dream, okay? Dreams are the same way. Dreams are obviously not real, but the emotion attached to your dream is what we do in dream analysis so that we can see what's really going on. Why do you have that emotion in you and what needs to be completed in your life and your track around that emotion, right? So it's the same thing. So going into past life regression is really about fantasy and imagination, okay? So once you have taken inventory of the suffering of this lifetime, you can pretend you're writing a film script where the story jumps from this life to the past lifetime. So this is what I tell my clients, okay? When we're going into a past life regression, first of all, you don't have to have attachment and believe those past lives. But what I want you to do is I want you to pretend like you're like a director, okay? Or rather a, you know, you're writing the script of a movie. And you know how there's those great movies that they go from one lifetime, and they jump to past lifetimes or future lifetimes, right? That's what I want you to do. I want you to look at the suffering and kind of the theme of your life in this lifetime. And I want you to pretend that you jump back to a past life. And it all makes sense of why you're playing out this theme in this lifetime. Okay, so we're going to do this. So example, imagine you're writing a movie script. When the movie script starts in this lifetime and portrays the suffering and theme of your life, then the movie jumps to a past lifetime and portrays the suffering that you went through, which is carried through in a bizarre and yet succinct manner. Okay, so an example of this is taking on the theme of this lifetime. So what is the theme of the suffering of this lifetime? For example, my theme when I started doing this was I'm constantly experiencing feeling abandoned and alone. It's like a romantic drama where the woman isn't able to accept people loving her because she's afraid they will abandon her. Okay. 
So what was fascinating was when I started doing my past life regressions, I had thought my abandonment issue was from this lifetime. Sure, my dad, you know, and my mom got divorced, my dad went off and had another family and other kids and da da da. So I had this whole like, oh, it's, you know, it's from this lifetime. It wasn't until I started doing my past life regressions that I started realizing, holy cow, there was some major, major, major trauma and major feelings of abandonment, people having to go away, right? So I want you to close your eyes and feel the suffering within this lifetime. I want you to really get the impact and the theme of your life. Is the theme that you're always at battle? Is the theme that you're always having heartbreak? Is the theme that you just can't ever figure it out? What is a theme if you're to put a character, you know, in your life and you're the main character? What's the theme of that movie of your life? You know, you might want to pause this podcast and kind of think about that for a minute. What's the theme of your life? Is it a hopeless romantic? Is it an action movie? Is it a thriller? You know, what's the theme of your life? And what's the suffering that you've gone through in this lifetime? Have people died around you? I have clients that everyone around them commits suicide. I have clients around them that, you know, they can have nothing but success, but in the success, there's a lot of betrayal. You know, what is the theme of your life? Next, I want you to close your eyes and feel the suffering and really, really feel that, okay? And I want you to imagine a movie where you you cut to the past life and there's a mental picture that pulls up with the same suffering feeling. I want you to really imagine what that is going there. For me, I was standing in a dirt road of my farm when the authorities came up on horses to tell me that my husband and love of my life had been killed at war. And I remember sitting there and it was like, it really felt like a, it was when I first started going into the process, it felt like a fantasy, like I was just kind of imagining, it was like almost like I saw a movie. And as I started describing the situation and standing there on this dirt road and having these authorities come up on their horses and telling me that my husband, who literally was the love of my life, had been murdered in, at war, basically. And I just started describing the feeling of feeling so, so distraught and so hopeless and like everything I'd ever cared about was taken away from me. And as I was in that session, I remember just bawling my eyes out. And it was the weirdest thing ever because I thought, how could this feel more real than the abandonment in this lifetime? And that's what began me on the path of realizing, wow, there's something here. These emotions are deep, 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 deep in our track, deep in the DNA. And as I began to work with, you know, hundreds of different clients and pulling up past lives and having them describe it, I never describe it for them. I never tell them what their past life is. They do it through fantasy. They do it through imagination. And I'm telling you, every single client I've worked with has been blown away by how real it feels when they go back there. And oftentimes, when I'm working with, you know, the women spiritual leaders in particular, they, a lot of them have been, you know, gone through a lot of different trauma on their track in in multiple lifetimes around being, you know, scrutinized as a woman, being burned on the stake as a witch, um, you know, being raped multiple times, all kinds of things. And that's why I feel like so many of them really desire to have women's empowerment and, and that voice in this lifetime. So, you know, I'm not here to say this is real or not real. I'm just here to say what I've experienced. And um, if it works for you, use it. If it doesn't work for you, don't use it. I think that all spirituality, the reality is that whatever process has worked for you to have you get freedom for you to understand your track, then, then that's great. If not, it's no problem. But as we go further down this track and keeping with this process, next, I want you to close your eyes again. And I want you to get in touch with the suffering you've experienced, again, in this lifetime and the past lifetimes. Now, take me to another mental picture from a past life. And it's okay if it feels like you're imagining it again. This is the vortex of the Akashic Records. 
the Akashic Records is a name that, you know, comes from our lineage, but really the Akashic Records lives in you. It lives in your DNA. It lives in this process. It's not measurable. It's not anything science has been able to get, but epigenetics now is proving there's memory. So there is truth at some level to this, okay? So close your eyes again and get in, try and really get in touch with the suffering. That pain point of a mental picture you can get in this lifetime, maybe another pain point or another pain point in another lifetime imagination of a mental picture of something that occurred that has that same pain in it. And begin to describe the image or spiritual memory. Just begin to write it out. If you have a journal, you could write it out. If you're in uh, meditation, you begin to speak it out. So an example is... I see myself watching my family being taken away from me. I'm crying and screaming. It's so painful because I know that I'll never see them again. One of my clients um, described being, you know, in the, uh, as a Nazi, you know, taking them away, um, being a Jew and having the Nazis take away their family and just the morbid and horrific feeling of knowing that your whole family is dying. And whether that's real or not, that client was able to tap into that collective consciousness that I truly believe that a lot of the emotions that we have in us is not just our track is we're we are one, right? We know scientifically we're we're energy and we're connected to everything and everyone. And we have a collective consciousness. And so sometimes when we're sad, sometimes when we're tapping into our trauma, we're tapping into the collective consciousness, trauma and sadness. And so I think that this is really a process of of revealing that true deep, deep emotion that lives in you, and as does the deep, deep, deep joy. So you can tap into whichever you want. It's like being a great actor. You know, the actors channel different personas, and they can switch accordingly. So this is the process of really getting in there and realizing you are that, and you are that. I am that I am, as the saying goes. Now, so do you feel the same about your suffering within this life and past lifetimes. And I think that's a, the point of it is do you have a new perspective? Do you have a new cognition? Have you expanded your consciousness? Have you experienced more depths of who you are? And if this you have, then, then that's really what we're looking for. It may be a shift in consciousness, subtle or profound. So for me, you know, my mission was born out of this. My mission was born out of having a stillborn in this lifetime, but it was also born out of the suffering and realizing that that heartbreak and that abandonment is really the loneliness. And as we get deeper, deeper into our spirituality, we can never feel alone because we really are the one, but we can have human moments still and feel alone. So when I feel lonely or abandoned, I know that is my my trigger to go and go deeper into my spirituality and remember the truth of who I am and everyone is. And so out of this process, so many of my clients have birthed their purpose. They know they're here to help empower women. They're here to make a difference in their lineage. They're here to no longer abandon people because they don't need to be abandoned anymore. They get to be there for others. They get to be the stable one in their family and in their relationships. So whatever that mission is, I know that your purpose and calling is already in you. You already have your purpose and calling. Your purpose and calling is to know the depths of who you are and complete that lineage, complete that suffering and trauma of all lifetimes. And so on that note, if you have gotten benefits and enjoyed this podcast, please give a five-star re- review. It's very important, you guys. And also, please refer a friend to it. It's important to be on this journey and you're not alone. It's important to build your tribe and community. And of course, you are able to apply to society. We are very cautious of who we let into the community. We only work with highly committed individuals who are committed to making a difference in the world. So you can go to Instagram, let's be friends. It's uh, at drerin.tv, which is at D-R-E-R-I-N.tv. Or you can find me at Soul Society, S-O-U-L-C-I-E-T-E. Have a divine day and may you live your truth. Thanks again for tuning in to Dr. Aaron and Soul Society podcast. I'd like to invite you to write a review on iTunes. Also, I have a free gift for you, a money meditation and worksheet, which you can find at soulciety.com. That's www.soulciety.com or 30 guided meditations at drerin.tv. 
That's www.drerin.tv. We also hold monthly Soul Society events that are all about transformation and building extraordinary community. You can also watch me live daily on goodmorninglalaland.com or Instagram at drerin.tv. Grab your free Manifestation Masterclass with the purchase of my international best-selling book, Awakening, a 40-day guide to unleashing your spiritual powers, life purpose, and manifesting your dreams at aaronfallhaskell.com forward slash awakening book.